Love is in his eyes there. For those who don't speak Dutch, that was <laughs> Eric Ten Hag back in 2019 telling Frankie de Jong, you're going to be joining me at Manchester United in 2022. That's course not what he said. That was just, uh, <laughs> I just like that video. I like my introductions these days. But look, I'm here to talk about the Frankie de Jong rumors that really are starting to emanate around Eric Ten Hag. And in this video, I want to explain exactly why I think the Frankie de Jong would be the dream midfield signing for Eric Ten Hag. I'll explain it with facts and stats and I'll prove exactly what I'm saying and I'll, and I'll run through the reports as and when they started now. Just enjoy the video. You let me know what you think about De Jong, about Ten Hag by the end of it. And if you do enjoy it, make sure you go down there and you hit that subscribe button, please. It would, make, would mean the world for me if you joined the United People's TV community. I'm enjoying where we're going to. It's been a rough few years. But look, when it comes to the Ten Hag and De Jong stories, it's all... It's not the first time that De Jong has been linked with the moon to Manchester United. Let's be completely honest. And yes, you might say, ah, Sam, this is just lazy journalism. Linking Ten Hag to a host of ex-players because he played with them at Ajax before. And then when you see what's coming out of Barcelona and Jordi Cruyff uh, saying that Frank De Jong is not leaving Barcelona, we will not sell him. He is a highly valued player within the club. Now, Barcelona are, of course, a club in substantial, substantial debt. And if they want to do the summer rebuild that they're going to do, probably under Xavi, maybe they need to sell some players. And maybe Frankie de Jong would be one of those. But the reason I want to speak about, and the reason I want to do this video is because something has to be really understood. I'm going to be doing my tactics video, hopefully on Ten Hag tomorrow. I've held back on it. I want to do it properly. Uh, and I want to do it tomorrow. Fingers crossed. And that's why I'm saying that Frankie de Jong would be the dream midfield signing for Eric Ten Hag and the system that he has. Because if you look at Ten Hag's football, one key player that they had that he has had in every single Ajax side that he's got is a deep lying progressive playmaker. Now, if we were to go over here and look at Manchester United's team at the moment, we can see that's our midfield. Fred and McTominay, right? If we were to look at the stats of Fred and McTominay, we would take a look here and we would see Fred, you know. Fred's decent uh, when it comes to the return of uh, non-penalty goals, assists. Okay, but look at his ball progression. Progressive passes, uh, 70 is not horrendous. Progressive carries, 37%. He doesn't really dribble well with the ball. That's according to the stats. Of course, when you go down, go down here and you see what Fred's actually decent at, winning the ball back, pressures, tackles, interceptions and blocks, that's what Fred does well. He does that well when he's in a position he doesn't have to focus too much on being the sole single pivot. Scott McTominay, in terms of progressive carries, he's okay at bringing the ball forward, but progressive passes, he's not very good. Dribbles, decent, but again, bumper stats down here. Well, actually, not really. Pressure's horrendous. Tackles, decent. Interceptions, very good. Blocks and clearances and aerial drills. Of course, he's going to win aerial drills. He's massive. But Scott McTominay and Fred are not good at playing in the double pivot in the way that Eric Ten Hag would want them to play because what he needs is a deeper lying playmaker who will be able to drop in between the center backs to drop to the left or the right of the center backs to receive the ball here and really progress the play forward now i've gone on record to say that probably my dream signing inside this role because i know that this is probably the more important thing to fix is true many and the reason i've said that it should be true many is because we need that ball we need someone who's extremely defensively minded to sit to fit in that role but when it comes to Ten Hag's true start of play, Frankie de Jong is a game changer and would be a game changing signing. His numbers are ridiculous. They really are ridiculous. And the thing you've really got to focus on here is progressive carries and progressive passes. Now, progressive passes might not be the best in the world with 75%. Progressive carries, he's very good at bringing the ball up with the ball at his feet. De Jong doesn't, ne doesn't necessarily have to look up and rely on someone else to bring it forward for him. He's the person that would come here inside this team, say hypothetically we were only to sign De Jong. He would be the person that would drop deep and drop into these positions for the ball and tell these defenders, give me the ball. Whether it's dropping in between the two centre-backs, whether it's dropping left, with Luke Shaw and, and then wingbacks. Again, I'll run through the tactics in a video I'm doing tomorrow, but the wingbacks are going to hopefully operate a little bit higher up the pitch. And whether it's De Jong, whether it's 
whoever it's going to be at Manchester United, there has to be someone who can drop either to the left of the centre backs or drop to the right. Oh, stupid semicircles. Here we go. Drop to the left of the centre backs, drop to the right of the centre backs to be able to be that deeper lying playmaker. And as it stands, we quite simply put, do not have that player in our team. We've got Fred and McTominay, both decent enough at winning the ball back. But that's about it when it comes to deeper lying playmaking and being a deeper lying midfielder. It's not in their repertoire. And if you're looking at uh, De Jong's stats over here, as I said, it's ridiculous. And just compare them to Gravenberch. Hmm, it's almost like they're very similar players because they are exactly similar players. Ten Hag, he's had the same system in 2018-19 and 2021-22 with the two Ajax squads that he's built. So Graven Birch, if he was available this summer and he wasn't basically going to Bayern Munich guaranteed, I'd say there would be a strong chance of him being the first signing. But look, progressive, part, progressive carries, dribbles completed, top 5%. For all of the progressive passes received and go to Frankie de Jong and compare. Top 5%. Dribbles completed not as well. Top 5%. Top 5%. They are the same. Not the same player, but the same style of player. Graven Birch has become that person who has done it inside that IX team. This season. And was it the year before? Or was it just his first season's breakthrough? I don't actually know that. But simply put, Manchester United's midfield is not fit for purpose when it comes to Eric Ten Hag's style of football. And I will explain that in a bit more detail when I run through my tactics video, which will go out tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you want to see that. But although I know the idea of simply linking ex ix players or current ix players with Eric Ten Hag because he's our manager might be considered by some to simply be lazy journalism. Whether or not he leaves by Barcelona, that's a different question altogether. But he would be Manchester United's dream midfield signing. He would probably be, whether, whether it's going to be De Jong or not, De Jong is going to be the example that he gives to Manchester United scout, that he goes in there and says to John Murto, I need a midfielder like De Jong. If you're having that question, that conversation, why don't you try and go out and get De Jong? Whether it's De Jong that's going to drop there, whether it's... I mean, it's not going to be Graven Birch. Whether it's De Jong, whether it's somebody else, it's going to be the example of Frankie De Jong. The sort of progressive, bring, as I said, the progression of the ball. That's what Manchester United cannot do. It's the biggest weakness we've got inside this squad is when we get into this position here is our ability to slowly, progressively bring the ball forward like that. What Manchester United do typically is shit themselves, kick it, kick it here quick. Lose a possession, go back defensively. Kick it there quick. Our, our transitions are very quick because we don't really have the players that have any confidence to progress the ball slowly. And that's why someone like, as I said, Frankie de Jong with that, pro that progression, someone like Graven Birch with that progression, will come in and be a huge upgrade on someone like Fred, who, while being fantastic at winning the ball back, being that sort of terrier-type midfielder that does have a purpose... And I think still will stay inside this Manchester United squad and play a role. Can't do what De Jong does. Can't be that playmaker. And neither can Scott McTominay. Although slightly better at moving the ball forward, I would say, than Fred. But neither of them. Neither of them are anywhere near good enough to be Manchester United's starting midfielders if we're truly going to start building a new style of football, an Eric Ten Hag style of football. De Jong's the dream signing in that sense. In terms of the other midfielder, you know exactly who I want there. I've, I mean, I've gone on record and already said the three, the best way to spend it would be someone like Chuamene. And imagine that. Manchester United could probably get Chuamene and, and Frankie de Jong for around about the same price that West Ham are asking for Declan Rice. That goes to where, that, 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 that's a shift in mentality we've got to have away from the big, big, big name who might be top of the list. The two names who combined could make such an incredible difference. So I wanted to explain that in this video. As I said, from the little video at the start, <laughs> let me play that again. Where is it? But it just made me laugh doing it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that smile. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah, there it is. There's the love affair. That's the love affair we want at Manchester United. He did. He did love De Jong. De Jong was incredible before he went to Barcelona for Ajax. 
So was Van der Beek. I haven't seen that since. And so was De Ligt. Maybe we'll get all three back together. I don't think we will. But I just wanted to do this video to explain exactly why I think that De Jong genuinely would be the dream midfield signing for Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United. And he will be the blueprint that he's using for that midfielder that he needs and wants. He replaced De Jong with... Well, he didn't directly replace De Jong with Graham Birch, but Graham Birch has grown into that role. Very similar style of player. Very similar style of role. It's Ten Hag's way of playing. Whether it's De Jong, whether it's someone else, I don't know. But you let me know what you think about that. Do you think there's any chance he could actually leave Bar Barcelona? United go in and we go in with the right offer. Barcelona are a club who are riddled with debt. And if they want to spend, they're going to have to sell. Why not, eh? You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I just wanted to do this video. You can let me know what you think. As always, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. We'll see you soon.